Hello and welcome to the Hideaway Doors. My name is Chris and today I'm going to go over some of our lock systems and their basic requirements. This, uh, this lock right here is an electronic strike. This one has 1,000 foot-pounds of force. This is what you call a fail safe. So this needs power to remain locked. Uh, if the power goes out, the lock opens. You can pair this up with a battery backup system. These are installed on all of our single doors, including our Alpha Door lineup and most of our mirror doors. The power source for all of our locks is standard household 110 volts. Each lock comes with a power pack similar to this, which takes the 110 volts and transforms it down to 12 volts, is what all of our locks work on. The power packs only have about a three foot long cord to them, and depending on where your power source is in relation to where your lock is going to be, or your push the exit button, you may need to splice some low voltage wire to make that distance. The, the manufacturer is recently supplying uh, the power packs with these cool little connectors. Can you see them? Where you can splice the end of your wires and connect it to this connector that's connected to the battery pack or the power pack actually. Um, I'm standing on the inside of our showroom model and our power source comes from up above. So we elected to run the wires down behind the wall into a 2x4 workbox where the push the exit button is. So more detailed information about uh, how to wire our locks and our openers can be found on our resource page. Okay, now when you order your lock with your door, we mill the profile of the lock out on our state-of-the-art CNC and it cuts this profile out. Uh, we don't ship the locks, the electronic strikes, with your door uh, because we have a high rate of shipping related damages. Something can knock into this, break the lock, or break the jam. So we ship, ship this with your door but just not attached. Uh, when you get your door uh, ready to go in your opening, what you want to do is you want to slide it in your opening and then take a pencil and trace out the inside of this opening onto the stud that's behind here. And the reason for that is the depth of the electronic strikes sit a little bit past the jam, so it, it won't allow you to, to put the, the door in with this in there. So you take your door back out, and where you trace, you'll take a chisel and chisel out the back of the 2x4, or actually the front of the 2x4, so it'll have enough space for this body of this lock to fit into. Um, then what you want to do is take your wires and pull them down uh, between your jam and your rough opening. Uh, in this case, we uh, decided to pull, tie a piece of rope onto a string onto our wire so we can pull our wire through. You pull your wire through the opening and let it hang. You'll make sure, finish installing your door, make sure it's adjusted properly, then you'll have a positive and a negative feed on the back of the locks or on the side of the locks that you'll attach your wiring to, stuff it back in the hole and fit it in the hole, then there's gonna be two Phillips screws that you take your electronic strike and attach it to your door. Now, for our double bookcase doors, we provide a 300 PSI electromagnetic lock. Uh, typically, they'll get mounted to the top of the bookcase. Uh, mounting suggestions can be found uh, on our resource page. So if you have a double door that's an outswing door, uh, you will want to attach this to the side with the, the door stop on it. That way, when it's in its locked position and shut position, this can't open. The other side of the door can't open, uh, vice versa for in-swing double doors. Okay, here we have a couple different types of locks that we use on different types of doors. We've got the electronic strikes, 300 PSI mag locks, and the mini mags, which is about 120 PSI. Um, all of these openers that we offer will control any of these type of locks. When there's different types of push to exit buttons, some of them, which isn't here, is the green button to push to exit. These light up, and this one lights up too. Depends on which one comes with your opener. Now. Uh, this is the biometric thumbprint and you need to mount this on your wall somewhere, somewhere near where your uh, door is going to be. Um, 
you could put a picture frame or something over it to hide it or conceal it. Uh, the biometric thumbprint, you're able to uh, program up to 600 different types of thumbprints on this one. And again, that'll control any of the openers or the locks that we have. The keypad, and I believe you get about a, a thousand, nine hundred and ninety nine different combinations that you can program so each person that you have you want access can have their own code or whatever. Uh, and then the then the key fobs, the wireless remotes, this is the receiver that'll go mount to the side of your wall. Um, and then you can program any of the key fobs, the wireless remotes to go with that. Uh, each one of these it comes with 10 of these plastic fobs. They come with a serial number on here and in our other videos we show you how to program them. So you can program, you know, each person can have a different uh, key fob. And what you do is you go up to the, the unit and slide it in front of it. It recognizes that you belong there and it will unlock the door. Same way with the thumbprint. Uh, you also get 10 of these key cards that does the exact same thing with those serial numbers you program it in and then you can use that as your opener. So, these two you need wall mounts for. We don't mount them to the doors. And this one will get mounted to the inside of your, your hidden room. It's the wireless remote that picks up on the, on, the, on the key fobs. This is the receiver, actually.